Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, and this is Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. I was the head coach of the Punahou School Boys Varsity Tennis Team for 22 years, and we were fortunate to win 22 consecutive state championships. This show is based on my books, Beyond the Lines and Beyond the Game, and it's about inspiration, welcoming adversity, and building a superior culture of excellence. My special guest today is a highly respected leader and CEO of Kai Hawaii. He is Ryan Tanaka, and today we are going beyond leadership. Hey, Ryan, welcome back to Beyond the Lines. Thank you, Coach Rusty. Ryan, while you attended Punahou School, when was the first time you first saw me there? When you were, you looked the same and you were in all white at the tennis courts and I was playing JV. I was a JV player. I was my junior year of high school. And I remember that you were always there extra, practicing extra many, many hours. And, and that really shows about, you know, your character and the person that, that you are today. And Ryan, you have a beautiful family, your kids, Kai and Emmy, your wife, Casey, who was my longtime tennis student. And when you guys got married, I was so happy. Um, out of Casey's many great qualities, what's the biggest thing you admire about your wife? Ooh, to choose just one is very difficult, but she is extremely kind and kind hearted. And there's really no agenda ever with Casey. And you know, as you know, Coach Rossi, so much of what we do is um, driven by our intention. And so with Casey, uh, I'm always able to just do a, a gut check and make sure that I'm, I'm always doing everything for the right reasons. So she's a nurse. She takes care of people for a living. And she certainly takes care of me and, and our entire family. Now, Ryan, when I had you previously on the show, you were the CFO and principal of Kai Hawaii. Now you're CEO. Tell me about Kai Hawaii and about some of your goals that you want to achieve to keep Kai Hawaii moving forward. Well, thank you. And let me start by acknowledging Ken Hayashida, who founded Kai Hawaii in 1998. So it's been, actually, I'm sorry, 1995. It's uh, been 28 years. And because of him, uh, he, you know, he's, he's built this wonderful company that's now one of the leading structural engineering firms here in the state of Hawaii. And I appreciate that he selected me to succeed him. And I hope I, I make him proud. Well, well, I absolutely love Ken. And Ken is really smart. And he's extra smart to have you succeeding him. Now, what, what do you want to do as CEO to really keep Kai moving forward? Yeah, so last year I met with all of our staff here at Kai Hawaii. Um, there's about 50 and met with them for several, um, either an hour, several hours for some of them and found out from them what do they want to see over the next three to five years. A lot of what we do is in the development process, really trying to add value to our clients. So we're client driven. We take care of our staff. Uh, we, we have a set of core values that we strongly believe in. And what we want to do is just further that. So we want to invest in our people. We want to make sure that we extend our client relationship, transform how we work, and also be a leader in sustainability and resiliency in our community. So our staff really drive our future. And it's because we're project managers at the heart of what we do. So we want to be on time, on budget, have extraordinary service and a really strong product, and then I'll always uh, find new ways to innovate for our clients. Well, Kai Hawaii is definitely a, a highly respected company for sure. And another one, Ryan, you last year, you acquired Underground Services. Tell me what Underground Services Incorporated is. So Underground Services deals with services that are below ground. So, you know, if you don't, if you don't, it's out of sight, it's out of mind. But so much of what we rely on is our underground infrastructure. There's collection systems for stormwater and sewers. And what we do for underground services or USI is we will clean and inspect. And we do that for stormwater, for sewers. We do flow monitoring. So 
will gather raw data that we provide to engineers who interpret that, provide them to lawmakers, and that's how they base their decisions on capital projects. So we're really integrated into the fabric of, of our infrastructure, which is aging, and it's an essential service that USI provides. We also have a phenomenal team. So there's dedicated people who have been there for now 10 years and, and longer, and they continue to lead the company and, and to help take care of all of our clients. Ryan, you know, all of us, we see things above ground. We really don't see what happens underground. And like you said, it's such an essential service, what you do, because the, um, the infrastructure is so important. I mean, that's that's something like you just mentioned is needs to be updated throughout Hawaii, right? Yeah, the, you know, the every area has their own collection system and they're they're owned by city, state federal, sometimes private, but each system, because they're aging and they're below ground, it's really hard to access them. So our, our team is specialized in confined space. They're NASCO certified and they're also CDL licensed. So they are able to drive these very large trucks that come in and, and address all these different issues. Right. And Ryan, you're also the owner of Island Business Management. Tell, tell us about Island Business Management. My background is uh, in investment banking and finance. So I started in Tokyo. I was working for Tokyo Star Bank and Deutsche Bank. I then moved back to Hawaii in 2007 and founded Island Business Management. It is a financial consulting company and I help clients to buy, manage, and sell real estate uh, and businesses. So during my time in Tokyo, that's what I did. I learned financial modeling and how to appraise commercial real estate, how to appraise businesses, not just from a third party perspective, but really from an acquisition standpoint. So acquisition valuation sometimes is different because you can, um, you know, you, you have synergies that, that you offer as the buyer. And that's um, what Allen Business Management does for select clients. Yeah, that's amazing. And Ryan, another thing that's truly amazing is you bought Giovanni Pastrami Restaurant in Waikiki 45 days before the pandemic. Why is Giovanni Pastrami such a popular restaurant? Yeah, we talk about motive being such an important driving factor. And the reason I bought Giovanni Pastrami was really to take care of the people who are there. And that's what makes it so special. There's just phenomenal people. When you go down there, you're going to have a great time. There's not just great food. We, for example, we have a round table pizza license. So we make our dough fresh, our ingredients are all fresh, and everything's made to order. So it melts in your mouth. So the food is delicious. It's a New York, New York style deli. We have sandwiches, pasta, salads. We have a, a nice breakfast menu. And, and going forward, we're going to be opened uh, from 7 a.m. to midnight. Right now, we're still at 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. daily. So we'll be back to pre-COVID hours here shortly. But what makes it so special is just the overall experience. There's great people. We have a fun environment and delicious food. Well, I absolutely love it. There's there's uh, many things on your menu that I need, not want, but I need. And and Ryan, tell me about the Giovanni Pastrami Restaurant Group. You're the CEO of the Giovanni Pastrami Restaurant Group. Who, what does that entail? So last year, the founder of Giovanni Pastrami he turned 80 years old and because he had sold me, like you said, Giovanni Pastrami 45 days before COVID, we became very close. And because of our relationship, he actually asked if I would be the buyer of his remaining Hawaii restaurants, CJ's and Round Table Pizza at the Hilton Hawaiian Village. And those are just great locations with a great team and they're consistent. They're always dedicated to the highest level of service. They keep very high standards. So that has completed the, the Giovanni Pashami restaurant group, which uh, we closed December 1st of last year. Wow, that's exciting. I mean, <laughs> Ryan, it's amazing. Um, you sure there's not six Ryan Tanakas? Is there just one Ryan Tanaka? There's only one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, Ryan, I want to ask you about my books. Um, you told me that that you read both of my books five times each, and I think you might be just a, as much of an expert with my books as I am. 
Now, what, what are some things that stood out to you in the books? Yeah, so um, right now, across our six companies, we have 200 employees. And I've, I've gifted your, your two books to most of them by now. And that's why I've read them so many times, is I want to make sure that what I read um, uh, and, and talk about with them, mm -hmm. I'm also applying and in, incorporating into my own life. So one of the, uh, for example, one of the principles that, that I just talked to them about last week, actually, was coaching versus teaching and your three cons. So the first con being to contribute. And I encourage our staff and our managers to catch each other doing great things that are selfless and that people may not notice. But if you see them, to point it out, take the time to pull them aside and just say, thank you for doing that. That was outstanding. Uh, I did notice it. And then share it with, with us so we can incorporate that into how we evaluate our leadership team going forward. The second con is consistency. So it's not just the consistency in high performance, which is obviously what drives what we do, but also the consistency and follow through. So it make, it's important that sometimes, you know, some of our staff, they get very busy at times and communication becomes extremely difficult. So that follow through is so important, keeping that as a driving, a driving factor in how we work. And then last, with, if you're good in what you contribute and, and strong in your, in your consistency, that builds your confidence. That's the third kind is confidence. So that way our staff, with whatever they're doing, especially if they're client or customer facing, they're confident in what they do. So your principles, for trust, your success principles, helps to drive our culture and to improve our culture of excellence. Ryan, I love that you brought up coaching versus teaching and the three cons there. And, and yeah, I mean, you know it inside and out. And it makes such a huge impact with any team, whether it be in sports or business. And I love how you're implementing those concepts with your, with your companies. And Ryan, you've helped me with numerous book donations to help our community uh, our schools, organizations, sports teams. I mean, why why have you helped me so much to really do these book donations? Well, Coach Rusty, you're a one of a kind. You know, you're somebody who's had this this perfect record: twenty two consecutive national championships, state championships that has created a national record, and that has led to you writing Beyond the Lines and Beyond the Game to teach other organizations how to build that same culture of excellence, that same championship culture. So it hit, So first of all, thank you for writing the books. <laughs> thank you for being willing to, to then share that knowledge with others so, so selflessly. And, and again, intention drives everything. When people get to know you and get to know your intention, you just want to help inspire others and, and make them better. And your book has saved lives. They have improved mental fitness for people and they have helped entire organizations like, like they have for ours. So that's why I continue to, to gift your book to different organizations because of what it's done for, for myself, for my family, and, and for our, organ our companies. Ryan, when you and I physically go there to donate the books and we can see the excitement, um, how really, I mean, it's a big positive impact that it's making on these various organizations and teams. And I mean, it, isn't it so fulfilling uh, when we're able to do that and, and really see all that? It, it is fulfilling, especially when you see, like if it's a team and you see the players buy into it, because that's gonna help the coach to coach more effectively, right? That's gonna allow our coaches to then retain those players and to also recruit more effectively. And that's an underlying driver of not just sports teams, but also companies where we have an employee shortage, if you can find ways to really inspire your team and, and find ways to have them connect, not just with your principles, but with each other, based on your principles, it's gonna bring out their best. And then when they're having discussions with each other um, behind closed doors, they're, they're just discussing the best things and, and, and ways that they can live the best versions of themselves and take care of our clients to the best of their abilities. And Ryan, our most recent book donation was last week to our University of Hawaii men's basketball team. And we had Brotherhood Grinds at your Giovanni Pastrami restaurant with the men's basketball team last week. And 
you are the founder, the originator of Brotherhood and Sisterhood Grinds. Can you tell tell us about what Brotherhood and Sisterhood Grinds is? So it started as a nutrition program with Coach Timmy Chang. It has evolved after 14 months into a leading NIL provider of the name image likeness provider of nutrition, career development, and experiences for our University of Hawaii coaches and their teams to recruit and retain Hawaii's top athletes. That's what Brotherhood Grinds and Sisterhood Grinds has evolved to. The way that's happened is after Coach Timmy Chang kind of helped to kick this off for football, we then did the same thing for men's, women's basketball, men's, women's volleyball, men's, women's golf, and now women's soccer. Starting in January of next year, we're, we're having discussions with Coach Rich Hill about launching it for, for baseball. What's, what's been the greatest challenge is creating a sustainable movement that is allowing all these different corporate sponsors and restaurants to be a part of it. So now we're at over 20 restaurants. Um, the most recent is McDonald's. So thank you, Victor Lim. But we're also um, expanding the corporate sponsorship aspect of what we do because of the career development. So a higher number of mentors, internships, full-time job providers, as well as just giveaways during these great, these great events. So um, they're now receiving multiple gift cards, gas certificates, Aloha shirts from Kahala, uh, Kalohe jewelry, multiple hotels are offering overnight stays, Alaska Airlines, anywhere they fly in the world. It's just been amazing. Um, when we celebrate for women's volleyball in August, uh, the, there's a new grand prize that's going to be even, even more special. So stay tuned for that. Well, Ryan, I was there with you in that initial meeting with Coach Timmy. And man, I mean, how how special was that for me to be there? I mean, you donated my books to Coach Timmy and his entire Hawaii football team there. And when he asked, you know, about or he shared about the, you know, the issue about wanting nutrition or meals, I mean, you stepped up. I mean, you're the first to say you wanted to find a way to help them, Giovanni Pastrami. And then what are the next three restaurants that you asked that um, also joined in immediately? Yeah, so first, if there was no Beyond the Lines, there would be no better Grinds, like we said. <laughs> <laughs> After Giovanni Pastrami, I was, you know, I was very willing to support Coach Timmy just because of who he is as a person. But, you know, the community needs to support him. We need him to be successful. UH football is our professional sports team, along with all of our other teams at University of Hawaii. And, and so it was because I'm the chairman, I was the chairman of the Hawaii Restaurant Association, thanks to Tom Jones of Kiyotaku, Mike Palmer, Ruby, um, Mike Palmer of Kuhio Al Food Hall, and Rick Nakashima of Ruby Tuesday. Those are the original four. And then after football, for basketball, uh, volleyball, golf, and soccer, then Jersey Mike's, uh, so Tim Janiszewski, Jason Higa from Zippies, and Ken Takahashi from Kuhio, from uh, Honolulu Burger Company also stepped up. So just a number of restaurateurs in the beginning, and that's just led to a number of new restaurants getting involved. Um, Polynesian Cultural Center, uh, 100 sales at Prince Waikiki. There's just so many new ones that are exciting, and, and they're all exciting. And we're just so appreciative to all the restaurants, all the restaurant owners. These are selfless individuals who are coming out of COVID who just want to help to make Hawaii better also. And we share that same passion for UH Athletics. And Ryan, this this is just the second year of Brotherhood and Sisterhood Grinds. And I want you to share, being a business owner of restaurants, I mean, there's a, there's a lot of restaurants that did not survive COVID. And the restaurants that did survive COVID, they still might be struggling. And, and some of those restaurants are the ones that's helping support our University of Hawaii teams, right? Yeah, a big thank you to all these restaurants. Uh, many of them, like you said, have not survived. Uh, I've had to be on multiple different interviews talking about the restaurants that have closed. And you know, we like to focus on the future, which is extremely positive for us. And we are um, faced with new headwinds as an industry for restaurants. And so we appreciate the, you know, our, our local community stepping up and supporting our local restaurants. That has meant everything. That has allowed all of these restaurants to stay in business. We're at now 4,400 eating and drinking places per the last NRA report. So that's how many 
in the middle of nearly a hundred thousand employees in our in our workforce that work for restaurants. So that's how large of a of an impact restaurants make on our local industry, our local economy. And Ryan, what I also like seeing, you know, you mentioned NIL agreements, but even beyond that, you're you're trying to help these student athletes beyond sports um, after their sports careers might finish to really help them with their business careers, right? So we've been meeting with the coaches this second year and, and saying, okay, it's, it's beyond nutrition. What more can we do to support your organization, your team? And they'll list a number of priorities. And we met with players. So the Wakine volleyball team came down, nine of their players with Coach Robin and one of her coaches, Coach Nick. And they identified a number of, of different things. It's not just nutrition. That, that is a top priority. But one of the other top priorities is career development. They just want support with being able to connect with the community off the court, off the field. So what we're doing is we're just rounding up all different people who are interested in helping. If you are, please email me, rtanaka at kaihawaii.com. And, and we're just trying to find people who are willing to, to offer time to our athletes. And it's, it's not just a one-time lunch or, or coffee. It's actually ongoing. We're trying to create these multi-year relationships that's going to allow them to succeed and, 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 and develop throughout their college years, but also after graduation as a working professional to give that continued support going forward. Ryan, you're just, you're funny earlier out if, if there was no beyond the lines, there would be no brotherhood grinds. <laughs> and wow, I mean, just to see how this has just blossomed. And I'm, like I said, it's just the second year, Ryan, and the potential is huge. And I think to really retain the athletes, but also to really attract, you know, the recruiting for new athletes, I think is going to be huge. And Ryan, this past Christmas, you did a adopt a family through Helping Hands Hawaii. What compelled you to adopt a family this past Christmas? You know, when I went and visited Helping Hands Hawaii, Susan Fruta uh, with my wife, Casey, she gave us a tour and, and showed us things like this warehouse where um, the community can donate and they stack shelves of electronics, food, clothing, all these household essentials, and they'll give homeless families a shopping cart and they offer them a shopping spree for, let's say, 30 seconds. And that allows these families to have these wow experiences and it's so inspiring. So their adoptive family during Christmas program is just as inspiring. There's hundreds of companies involved. We're fortunate that we were able to get involved this past Christmas and uh, throughout you know, an invitation to all of our 200 employees and they, many of them stepped forward. They wrapped gifts. They, you know, we got the wish list from, the, from each other. Six to so our family uh, was a single mom, unemployed, with six children and very young children. And we met with them. So we found out what they, what they needed, not just what they wanted, but really these are ne their lifestyle needs, clothes, shoes, backpacks, things that you would think, you know, that for the moms, because you're unemployed, a laptop, just things that they need to survive. When we visited their apartment, we saw that their refrigerator and, and range was broken and the landlord refused to, to fix it because they broke it. So you know, we had to really look at, okay, how do we now solve all these problems? And, and our employees stepped up also with cash contributions. So we raised $6,000 among our six companies and that allowed us to buy new appliances and, and new hardware, you know, computer electronics and they fulfilled their wish list multiple times over. And then we had people like Coach Timmy Chang offer football and cash, Coach Robin Amo offer pictures from her Olympics, uh, time during the Olympics to, to leave around the house to inspire the department to, to inspire their family. And then we had um, you know, Marissa, my general manager at Giovanni Pastram, we wrap everything and we uh, delivered it with Kahi Graham, the former football quarterback for St. Louis School and his family with Coach Gary and, and their and their you know, their, his wife and, and other son. So we went down and made a huge impact for this family, leveling them up completely. And that was such an inspiring experience to be a part of. I love that, Ryan. I absolutely love it. And Ryan, I want to talk with you about leadership now. You are a very humble leader. 
But I want to also ask you, what, what are some of the reasons why you are a successful leader? Well, I still have a long way to go. Thank you, Coach Rusty. Um, I, I believe it's more important to give than to receive. And that's really what I, what I focus uh, on. You know, we also create healthy organizations. So we believe in our core values at Kai Hawaii. It's, it's not just showing up for work. It's really showing up for work and, and, and believing in, in being a steward and innovation, collaboration, and dedication to what we do to our clients. Um, so much of, of what we do is driven by the needs of our clients. Our success is driven by helping them to be successful. And so that's why it is so important for us to be on time, on budget, to deliver beyond their expectation. So, so much of what, of what I do is work with great people who are delivering that. Our teams at each company has managers and staff who are phenomenal. I, I believe that we have some of the best staff in Hawaii. And because we're blessed with that, that allows us to be successful individually as well as collectively. Ryan, I know that you have high standards and you are building a superior culture of excellence with all of your companies. How do you how do you get your team members to buy into your leadership philosophy? You know, it's that principle of right people on the bus in the right seat. It, it's just who they are. They're just they, they themselves live by the highest standards that they can. And because of that, it becomes contagious. They then um, they train and, and mentor other people on their team to do the same thing. And so a lot of what I do is I just focus on supporting them, right? So we meet weekly and I ask them, how can I support them and their great efforts? Because they're really the ones who are doing a lot of the, the driving of, of our client experience, our customer experience. And my role, my main role is to support them to be successful at it. And Ryan, I know you very well, and I know that you have empathy for every team member of all of your companies, and you care greatly, I mean, super deeply about their well-being to try to help them individually and to really help the, the whole team collectively. What are your thoughts? Thank you, Coach Rusty. That's, that's just because I, you know, I started with nothing and my career has been you know, one step at a time. I, I hope that the people who I worked with, if I maybe you know, wasn't as, as didn't treat that relationship as well as I could have, that, that looking back, you know, we can continue to build those bridges again. And going forward, I just, just strengthening the friendships and the collaborations that, and partners that we have in place now. So it's a constant work in progress. But what matters the most to me is that you know, I, I'm from Hawaii. I grew up here. And so many people over the years have selflessly helped me to get to where I am today. And I, I take it upon myself to do the same thing for those around me. And that's why I spend so much of my time trying to just give back to the community and, and serve others. Ryan, I have to say that you are a proven leader. I've seen you take good companies and make them great. I've seen you take great companies and make them extraordinary. You are an extraordinary leader and person and a great role model for everyone in the world. And you know me, I'm trying to inspire the world through my books and keynote speakings and my shows. And I know that you're focused on trying to really inspire and help everyone in Hawaii, right? Yeah, that, you know, that's, that's the one thing that we have in common. You're out there just trying to inspire everyone that you can globally. And I'm good at just focusing here in Hawaii, <laughs> trying to make Hawaii better. <laughs> Ryan, well, teamwork, right? <laughs> teamwork. <laughs> yeah. Ryan, I want to thank you for taking time uh, to join me on the show today to really share these insights. I mean, it, it's absolutely fantastic. Thank you. Thank you, Coach Rusty. And thank you for watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. For more information, please visit RustyKomori.com. And my books are available on Amazon and Barnes and & Noble. I hope that Ryan and I will inspire you to create your own superior culture of excellence and to find your greatness and help others find theirs. Aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii.
If you like what we do, please click the like and subscribe button on YouTube. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Check out our website, thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.